today we are going to start a new series. Again, it's a viewer suggested or request from one of the Facebook groups. They said they'd like to see more grits. So I figured I'd start doing some experimenting with grits. So today we are going to try a new thing that I'm going to call cinnamon apple grits. When I was a kid, we used to uh, live in Mississippi for a while, and we had a lot of grits, and I like to put uh, like a teaspoon of strawberry jam or something mixed in my grits. So I'm kind of going to build on that concept and use apple pie filling stroke talking, topping. Now I'm using the Lucky Leaf Premium brand because it doesn't have any high fructose corn syrup, and it's non-GMO. and uh, gluten free it says so it's a little bit more expensive if you use this but you don't get the corn syrup and so I shouldn't have any problems freeze drying that so first thing I do is I'm just gonna follow the recipe on the box we're gonna end up with a total of 12 servings I want to pack 12 but we're gonna follow the uh, instructions for four servings on the box and we'll see how much that gives me. And then we'll just make some more to make up my 12 servings that I want for my size. So what I have here in my skillet is four cups of water. We are going to put that on start. Maximum sear. We're going to bring that to a boil. And we're just going to cook it according to the directions. Well, I should say we're going to mix it according to the directions because I am going to add a few things to it. Okay, it looks like it's coming up to a boil. So I have a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and one cup of grits. And if I didn't mention it, these are called quick grits. And you want to stir this as you're putting it in so you don't get clumps. You want to add it slowly. Nobody likes lumpy grits. Okay, we're going to cook this. Let's see, I think I've got to turn that down to a simmer. that to a, like a medium low and we are going to cook this for about four minutes and I'm going to cover it but we're going to cook it for four minutes and I'm going to stir that occasionally okay that's coming up on four minutes so and it's thickening up nicely so I want to take the opportunity to talk what I'm my next ingredient I bought this from Amazon and it's uh, Hoosier Hill Farm real butter powder this is made with real butter it says uh, thank you for teasing the new room not that one the ingredients are butter and that's it and of course it tells you what's in the butter. Sweet cream, salt, and natto color, and non-fat milk solids. And I just bought this on Amazon and it's got a shelf life of May 16th, 2024. So two years, kind of, on this. And I just took a dab of the flavor and it tasted pretty good. So we're going to put that in here. And they say you use this one to one. So if you were going to put one tablespoon of butter you'd put one tablespoon of powder and we got four servings here so I'm going to put four tablespoons of powder in that Get 
gotta mix. Mix that in there. And that should give it a nice buttery flavor. Reading the reviews on this, the people swear by it on uh, putting it on their buttered pop or popcorn. Just making sure that's all dissolved in there. Okay. Now, I don't know how much, I'm going to say that's going to make about, probably just four cups. So I'm going for a 12, I need this three of these, if that makes four cups. So I'm going to put one third of the can of uh, high filling stroke topping in there. I might just do a little chopping on that. We'll see. Yeah. Get a fork out and see if I can chop those big chunky slices out. That's one thing about the Lucky Leaf apple or pie fillings. If you get the premium, they have two different versions premium and non premium. Their premium is packed full of fruit, they don't skimp on the fruit, so it's worth the extra money that you spend on that. Of course, you can make your own. But John and Bib sometimes like to do it the easy way. And I'm going to look at that and I'm saying we need to put a little bit more apples in there. So. Let's put the whole can in there. Don't be shy. Alright, let's bring that up to a boil. I'm going to put that on high. Bring that to a boil. And then we'll see if we need to add anything else to that. Okay. That tastes good. I turned the heat off while I dug out my spices. Because we are going to add a little bit to this. Got some ground cinnamon and some nutmeg. Teaspoon of ground cinnamon in there to start with.
And I don't want to overdo the nutmeg, so we'll do a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg for now and see what that tastes like. Boy, you get a good, nice whiff of that cinnamon and nutmeg. Let's see what that tastes like. got plenty of nutmeg. We are going to put another teaspoon of cinnamon in that. And I am going to add a quarter of a cup of sugar to that. an eighth. That's a quarter. Now let's see what we're getting at. That's good, but what I'm going to do now is turn that back on high, and I'm going to put some milk in that. I'll start with half a cup. I'll kind of make it like kind of like a cereal. When you rehydrate it, you can always make it as thick as you want it. That's going to be good. So the grits aren't quite done yet. I'm going to bring this to a boil. Then I'm going to cover it. And let it simmer for, let's see, what do we do, four minutes there? That's five minutes cooking. I'm gonna simmer it for two minutes and see if that those grits are done. So let's put that on medium low, and I'll see you in two minutes. Okay, I pretty much had to stir this constantly, or else it's stuck to the bottom here. But we're trying to cook this to a until my grits were kind of tender and it's been a couple of minutes on that low heat so let's turn that off let's get my ladle and let's see how many we get out of this I'd like to fill this whole tray which would mean I wouldn't have to go to the store again and get more apple.
and that did very well have a little bit left over and I'll probably just put that in a bowl I'll mix up another batch we'll tray it up exactly the same as that and that will be 12 servings each disc is going to be be half a serving so two discs would be one serving I have one two three four five six on that tray right now I'll let that cool down and once it's cooled I'll stick it in the freezer get it frozen solid next time you see that we'll be taking them out of the molds I'll see you then and here we go I'm ready to unmold these and put them back in the freezer and fire up the freeze dryer so what we got going on over here is uh, for my third tray, my third or my fourth slot in the freeze dryer, I wanted to put some milk and I was filling the tray and I overspilled a little bit and that just spilled out on top of my grits, which I'm not too worried about because that's milk and it's got milk in it, so we'll just ignore that. But what we're gonna do on this is get try and get this up to we're going to put eight discs on there and that's going to probably be my two to two and a half pounds we'll see Six, seven, eight, brings me up to two pounds, two point zero four pounds. So these are again, these are going to be about four ounces each. So that's a perfect weight to be going in the freeze dryer. So that's how we're going to do it. Just spread them out so that they freeze dry better, and that's how we'll do it. Okay, we'll get these into the freezer, fire up Big Red over there, and when it tells me to, I'll stick them in the freeze dryer. Next time you see them, they'll be coming out. I'll see you then. Okay, there we have it. Twelve ser servings of apple pie grits. And I am going to get these bagged up. We are going to do them to two bricks per pouch which is approximately one cup of grits and as always I'm going to put them in the pouch seal them up and then once I get them all sealed up in the pouches I will open my O2 absorbers 
and put one 300 cc O2 absorber in each pouch and then we'll do a heat seal on them and a vacuum seal. Okay, let's get these sealed. Or O2. Each one of these packs contain 10 O2 absorbers, so in all fair and love and war, I should need to open that other pack and take out two. Actually, I don't want to zip this from my vacuum seal, so I'm not going to zip that. Turn that all the way up for the 7 mil. Okay, so we got those all initially sealed. Now I'm going to cut that corner off so that we can vacuum seal it. Okay, so we got those all cor the corners cut on that. Let's put them in my chamber. See how many of these will seal on the first try. If I can get them all in there. Okay. Close the release valve, open the vacuum valve, and let me turn the noise on. Okay, that's gone about as far as it's going to go. Isolate the vacuum, and release the vacuum. Turn my pump off. Let's seal these up. Alright, so I had three that didn't vacuum. We're going to examine that, see why. I have no idea, so we'll put that back in there. That one might not have vacuumed because I didn't have it flat enough, and it's actually a very big hole in there. I cut that one a little bit big, and I cut that one really big. So, let's give it a little pinch there. We'll run these again real quick. Second time's a charm. Alright, so just a quick review on this. Let's see if 
if I can get that in the camera. I don't know if you can see that, but my seam up here, my seam down here, this is the bag seam original, and this is my heat seal, and I cut that a pretty big gap. You really want that gap about two millimeters. You don't want it less than, say, two, two millimeters because the air might not get out of it. But any more than two millimeters, then you chance it not sucking shut when you release the vacuum, which is what happened on these. So all I did was just flattened it out, started to zip a little bit there to kind of hold it all shut, and it vacuumed it through over here. So, there you have it. We'll get this put away, and then I'm going to do a reconstitution. Okay, so we got the kettle boiled, the others put away, so let's open one of these up and do a taste test. A reconstitution institution. Take out our O2 absorber. Now, I've got a cup of water here. I'm going to put three quarters of a cup in there to start with. Zip lock that shut. See if I can't break those bricks up. In the past, I've had to crumble that. Ooh, that's hot. Make sure that zip's shut. Let's let that sit for two minutes. We'll open it up and see if those bricks will get any softer. I might have to write on here to crush those bricks up because of the sugar in it. The grits that I've done before reconstituted very nicely, but they didn't have sugar. This has sugar, so it might need a little help breaking up. So, we'll see you in two minutes. Okay, it's been two minutes, and I can still feel some lumps in there. So I'm thinking a better way to repackage to package these, which I'm not going to repackage them, is to powderize that. The way I would do that is put the two bricks in a Ziploc bag, get my rolling pin, and beat it out. But we'll see what happens here. We're going to open that up. Take my spoon, see if we can break some of that up. Okay, I got most of the big lumps done. Let's zip it back up and we'll let it sit for another two minutes. Okay, that's been two more minutes. It might have all came out all right. Let's have a look. That's what it looks like in the pouch, and you could eat that right out of the pouch. Let's put it in my bowl. out like more importantly I'm suspecting those apples might be the problem of not rehydrating versus the that might have been a major majority of the lumps I was filling in there wait a minute there's some there's some oatmeal that hasn't got rehydrated of course it's all around an apple all right <clears throat> Let's see, let me give you my honest opinion. This smells really good. Try it without a piece of apple. Yeah, that's good as a cereal. Unfortunately, I think you're gonna need to add that much water 
to get it all to rehydrate. Let's try a piece of apple. No. That ain't gonna work for me. Now, I don't like to waste anything, so that's gonna go back. That is going into my store. But those apples are chewy. They did not they did not reconstitute at all like I had hoped they would. So what would I do different? I really like the flavor of this. It's really good. But I don't like the texture of the apples. But I've sat here, what, discussing this for a couple of minutes. And the apples are getting softer. It's just that, you know, John and Bibbs, he likes the instant meal. I don't want one that I have to put in the fridge for the most part. I mean, I do other things too, but for the most part, my meals, I like them to be ones that I can add water to and eat within five or ten minutes. You know, apples are still a bit chewy, but they are softening, but my grits are getting cold. <laughs> while I was doing that. So, I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to call this a, a success with an asterisk because I think the flavor is absolutely spot on but I don't think I would use the apples or if I did use the apple pie filling I'd cut them in much, much, much smaller chunks. So not a great success by John and Bibbs this time. Not a fail either. I think if you made a few modifications, that would be a great filling breakfast snack. Instead of a bowl of cereal, have a nice big bowl of apple pie grits. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I apologize for the not 100% success, but I do want to put this up because it is a great taste. And I'll see you next time.